Does your company actually now need a radical new strategy to stop investor outflows? No, not at all. Um, I think our strategy is very clear. It's one that the, the board supports, and, and, and it's all about execution. And I think Keith and, and Martin before him, when they were co-CEOs, have done a fantastic job in bringing the two businesses together, creating a platform for, for future growth, uh, great complementarity in terms of geographic and product sets. And, and Stephen's appointment marks uh, it, it basic, uh, basically an evolution into the next phase to build on that platform to deliver the opportunities that we can see. Why was the chief executive change, though, necessary at this time? What will you know, Mr. Bird bring uh, that Mr. Skiop didn't? Well, it, 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 he's different, but, but I think it's, uh, it's an evolution. I mean, Keith is coming to the end of five years as CEO, which was a, a benchmark in his own mind as to reflect what to do next. We're coming to up to three years of the, the combination with Standard Life and, uh, and Aberdeen. Um, we're also coming out of a, a very difficult period of coronavirus and, and, and uh, the reconfiguration of the way we've been working over this period, which Keith has led absolutely fantastically, um, did cause a reflection that as we enter into whatever the post-COVID period looks like, there's going to be a huge amount of adjustment in working practices across every business, every industry, including our own. And to have a settled succession as we go into that, someone who can see it the whole way through, is, I think, and the board thought, a very positive opportunity to, to, to take. Um, Stephen's background, um, uh, very, very long uh, career in, in, in city, in, in, uh, in leading a consumer business, in leading a wealth business for over 10 years, a distribution platform, the kind of businesses that we would dis uh, business that we distributed through. He's got an ops and technology background. He's got a, a, an obsession with customer service, customer experience, customer value, and the digitalization of that, which he led at City in the consumer business. And these are all going to be aspects that I think are going to be very important for us, indeed for, for our industry. And therefore, he brings a, mm -hmm. a, a different set of skills um, uh, into, the, into the business at a time when those skills, I think, are very important. Does it mean that you could be on the lookout for more M&A? Would you be selling anything off and buying anything else? Oh, far too early to say. I mean, I think that, that we've, got a, we've got a very established platform, which I, I believe there's great opportunity in. So let, we'll let Stephen reflect on, on what he's got, which I think he'll find uh, very attractive. And also we've got a very strong balance sheet, um, largely because of the, the opportunities we took over the last 18 months to realize stakes from our Indian investments. So we've got far power to invest in our businesses. Uh, if there are um, small acquisitions that make sense, um, we'll look at them. Who knows what will happen in the, in, in the next period? But I think the most important thing is to build on, on, on the very strong platform that, that Keith and Keith and Martin, uh, when they were co-CEOs, uh, have, have, have built. Uh, do you think it was a time for a change in chief, ex in chief executive? Did you ask Keith Skiak to actually step down? No, it was, a, it, was a, it was something we've been working on together for some time, and it was a natural evolution as we're coming to the third anniversary of the coming together, as we're coming to the fifth anniversary of his, his appointment. He's been on the board for 14 years, and as we had the opportunity to recruit a, an absolutely first-class, seasoned, well-established uh, financial services leader, um, who is very excited about the opportunities that, that Standard Life Aberdeen offer. Um, and so all these things came together at the same time. And as I said, the, the importance of having an established uh, position as we go into the next phase of A, the evolution of our development, but also in the post-COVID world was a, was a very important thing to, to reflect on. So, um, no, we're delighted. And, and no, this has been a cooperative uh, um, uh, succession between uh, Keith and the board. And, 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 and we, we're very delighted with where we've ended up. Um, Douglas Flint, what do you think the post-COVID world will look like for asset managers? Will it be very diverse? Are clients demanding others' things? I think it's accelerating changes that were underway. I think that the, the way we reach, as, as, as the savings world and the investment world becomes more democratized, um, by virtue of the fact that there is less corporate provision through defined benefit schemes, as people are having to take more responsibility for their affairs, 
Um, I think the asset management world takes on a, a new role. I think that technology will be increasingly important. And I think the, 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 the coronavirus experience has reinforced in, in everybody, whether it's personal, corporate, or indeed government, building more resilience into your financial affairs, having the capacity to absorb shocks is ever more important. And I hope that that is a message that, that both through the through public policy regulation and, and our industry, we can we can reinforce um, to help people um, build the kind of financial stability that they need to uh, deal with their natural um, lifestyle events like retirement and so on, but also to deal with having the resilience that that that, that, that is necessary for the kind of shock that, that we've just had. Hopefully, we won't have another one as severe as this. But people need more resilience in their in their personal. Uh, financial affairs and, and that's something that we're going to 